Hi learners, it's Em from Sano Nerds, and this video is going to be on other tests that we can use to take a look at the thyroid. So you might be wondering, what is the big deal about knowing about those other tests? Well, one of the reasons that we want to know about these other tests is that if we have awareness of other imaging modalities, it's really helpful for us to be able to take a look at those modalities, know what they're showing us, and then correlate that back to the ultrasound that we're about to do. Super common for other modalities to find nodules that we can go ahead and characterize with ultrasound. Also might be important, once we find a nodule with ultrasound, kind of knowing what the next steps are might really affect how we're going to take our pictures and tell the story to whoever's reading our exam. If we're seeing a structure that maybe looks almost solid, but kind of cystic, and you're not really sure, knowing that a two centimeter nodule is probably going to get a biopsy versus a two centimeter cystic space in the thyroid not getting a biopsy might just make you work a little bit harder to clear it out or to prove that it's a solid versus cystic nodule. So knowing that there are things that are going to happen after the test really might just inform your exam even that much more. And then lastly, we need to know that ultrasound is not definitive. We cannot make a concrete diagnosis based on ultrasound alone. We are going to need a biopsy to confirm any sort of diagnosis. That being said though too, if a patient has a really difficult neck to image, or if we wanna get more information about all the nodules, or maybe about all the lymph nodes that we're seeing in the neck, other modalities might be helpful in the diagnosis process as well. So just kinda of understanding what else is out there for the patient is valuable. The first imaging modality that we'll take a look at is nuclear medicine, specifically scintigraphy. Now, scintigraphy uses nuclear medicine to image the thyroid. So the patient's basically injected with a radioactive iodine, and then the nuke med scan of the body is performed. And the idea is, is that this will show where that iodine tracer is. And since the thyroid is the only organ that can metabolize iodine, we would expect to see this iodine tracer in areas that are made of thyroid tissue. In this image, we can see a scan performed here, and what we are seeing is a very, very dark thyroid. Uh, we can see both lobes and the isthmus here, and we can see where that ectopic tissue sits as well. The darker the area is, the more iodine we suspect is being picked up. So in this thyroid, it's very, very dark compared to our normal thyroid. This one is suspected to have Graves' disease because it is an overactive thyroid really using that iodine up. It's important to note that hot nodules, again, are going to appear as darker areas within a normal thyroid. Those hot nodules are producing their own T3 and T4, so they're picking up more iodine than the rest of the normal thyroid tissue. And then we can also have something called a cold nodule. And in cold nodules, we'll see that there's an absence of the iodine tracer. And that is because this area of the thyroid is not functioning. It is not picking up that iodine. We'll learn later that hot nodules tend to be benign and cold nodules are actually more concerning for malignancy. PET stands for positron emission tomography and is a combination of a CT scan and a nuclear medicine test. Now, although PET scans can be used at any point during a patient's care, we typically see them being done after a thyroid cancer diagnosis. The PET can detect metastatic involvement of nearby structures or recurrent disease post thyroidectomy. Now this image shows a bright orange spot, which is a lymph node that papillary thyroid cancer has metastasized to. So these look very similar to CTs. They usually just have kind of this pinkish glowing orange overlay uh, where it's very, very bright is suspected to be cancerous areas or metastases. When you're looking at a CT, you're typically going to find the trachea it shows up as black because it's filled with air and then we'll look anterior to it for the thyroid tissue. You wanna make sure that you're actually up in the neck a little bit more. These are getting down into the lungs, so we can see a lung on either side here. Again, air appears as black, so um, we're a little bit more inferior than where the thyroid tissue is, but that trachea is a really good landmark for looking for the thyroid tissue. CT stands for computed tomography, and this is a scan that combines a series of x-ray images taken from different angles around the body. So CT scans can create cross-sectional images or slices of the bones, blood vessels, and soft tissues inside your body, 
providing more detail than just like a plain x-ray. CT scans commonly catch incidental thyroid nodules that are followed up by ultrasound exams for better characterization. So again, looking at our image, we're going to find the trachea, the black circle in the middle of the neck, because it's filled with air. We're going to look for an area that we're actually in the neck, so we can see the cervical spine here. We're not to the clavicles, we're not in the head, so we're looking right in the middle of the neck here, and we can see the thyroid tissue around it. It's this little bit brighter spot here, and this arrow is pointing to a large complex nodule in the right lobe of the thyroid. We can see lots of other things in this image as well. We can see the carotid, jugular vein, other carotid and jugular vein. We can see the esophagus and we can see the strap muscles. So we can see uh, really more of a global cross section of the neck at the level of the thyroid. MRI stands for Magnetic Resonance Imaging. MRI scanners use strong magnetic fields, magnetic field gradients, and radio waves to generate images and organs of the body. MRI is especially good for looking at muscles, tendons, and bones. So MRI is just another one of those modalities that tends to catch incidental thyroid findings, especially since it's used to evaluate the cervical spine frequently. So here, if somebody's having neck pain, not uncommon for them at some point to end up with an MRI. So they'll be looking at the spine portion of the neck, but then the thyroid ends up in those pictures as well. And they'll comment on that incidental finding. So this is an incidental finding of a 2.5 centimeter nodule in the right lobe. Not uncommon then to get an order for something like this needs further characterization with ultrasound. And then that's when we'll see them. We'll see that an incidental thyroid nodule is seen. We can go to the MRI itself. We'll want to look in the coronal, the sagittal, the transverse plane so we can kind of identify. We know it's in the right lobe and we can see it's a little bit more towards the mid inferior portion of it. It'll give us a really good idea of where to start looking when we do our ultrasound so we can correlate appropriately. Now swinging back a little bit more to ultrasound, elastography is a newer ultrasound application that uses the pressure of ultrasound waves to make calculations. So elastography can be used to determine the stiffness of tissue. So when used, the color map will usually show the stiffness of the soft tissue in the image. Stiffer structures appear as blue and are more likely to be malignant. So this image shows a dual screen image of a thyroid nodule. So we've got the nodule here with the elastography color map applied over it. And then we have our grayscale image next to it for comparison. So we can kind of see both at the same time. The elastography image shows a very large nodule that is assigned predominantly blue, indicating that it's more likely to be malignant due to its stiffness. We can see that the rest of the thyroid tissue, which looks very normal on the B scale here, is those reds, those yellows and greens. So this is all very soft, squishy tissue compared to this large nodule. But of course, a biopsy needs to be performed to confirm. So remember, a biopsy is the only way a definitive diagnosis can be done. A biopsy is the removal of the cells to be observed under a microscope. The most common method of thyroid biopsy is something called an FNA or a fine needle aspiration. Ultrasound is going to be used to guide a very small needle into the nodule of concern. Essentially what occurs is that a needle will be inserted into the nodule and the pressure differences between the inside of the hollow needle and the body will push some cells into that hollow needle. Once the needle is removed, the cells are going to come out with it and they get flushed from the needle onto a microscope slide where a pathologist reviews the slides and can determine the cellular makeup. This is typically a very simple outpatient procedure, but they can also do biopsies during the surgical removal of a nodule or organ. So again, FNA stands for fine needle aspiration, a very, very thin needle, is used to remove sample cells from the area of concern and then reviewed under the microscope. As a sonographer, there's a really good chance that you will assist with an FNA in the general department. Our role is typically to set up the supplies and ultrasound machine for the procedure. An FNA is a sterile procedure, so we need to follow sterile protocol. So we're gonna have a sterile probe covers, sterile drapes, sterile supplies, gel, gloves, all of that. And then we'll also make sure that we set out enough slides and syringes 
and needles to actually perform the test. Typically, a radiologist or another high-level provider will be the one to actually perform the FNA. Sonographers, after getting everything set up, typically run the machine, taking pictures while the provider holds the transducer and directs the needle placement. So here we can see a little video of a needle going directly into the nodule here at the top. This is the targeted area. So they're going to watch the needle come in, go into that nodule, and then they kind of move it around a little bit, trying to grab whatever cells that they can. So FNAs are typically reserved for nodules that are mostly solid, since they do carry higher malignancy risk. However, we can also perform something called an aspiration, and these are going to be mostly helpful for cystic nodules, especially nodules that are bothersome to the patient. Now, this is very similar to an FNA where a needle is inserted into the nodule, which we can see here. We'll then use the ultrasound to watch as that fluid is pulled out of the cyst by a syringe. That fluid then can be evaluated for malignancy, but oftentimes cystic nodules are benign. Unfortunately, aspirations are not permanent. Quite often, once that fluid is withdrawn, the fluid will start to build up again over time. So again, aspirations usually aren't offered unless the cyst is rather large and particularly troublesome for the patient.